So today on BKR Sports, we are back for a season review. As you guys know, we are going through all 17 teams in the NRL in 2024. We're talking about their signings and losses going into the year. We're talking about their signings and losses going into next year. You know, providing a little bit of hope, but also giving you the lowdown of my perspective in regards to if it was a successful season or not, or if it wasn't a successful season, and trying to really pick apart why that was. You know, obviously, I've already done my season review for my team, so... So, you know, if you think that I'm going too hard on your team, don't worry. I went on on my team as well. Not crazily, obviously. I'm not going to insult anyone's teams and not, you know, going any players or anything like that. But I will outline from my perspective why I think that, you know, there are definitely some concerns still going into next year. Or again, what the positives are, man. So also, do understand, it's my perspective. Please jump into the comment section. I would love to hear your thoughts on all these teams. We have already done the West Tigers, the Rabbitohs, the Parramatta Squeals, and also the Gold Coast Titans. I really should stop every single time I say the Eels. I really should stop saying Squeals. But I do love saying the Brothers Squeals. I do love saying that every time. But today, guys, we are into... The New Zealand Warriors. Hello, New Zealand. Welcome, 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 welcome to an interesting review here because they're... This was a really disappointing year for the New Zealand Warriors. Obviously, last year was such an unbelievable and electric year for them. And I would say that this year, the Canterbury Bulldogs are doing what the New Zealand Warriors did in 2023. And I know that might hurt that for the Warriors to hear, to be completely honest with you, because obviously... You know, you've gone down into a lower position whilst they've risen right up and there's another team that are getting their moment and their excitement. But with that being said, I think that is the truth. I think that the, the Bulldogs have really overtaken in regards to being that team. And then you even go back into 2022 and you'd probably say the Cowboys were the team like the Warriors and the Bulldogs. In 2021, there wasn't really a team, I guess, in 2021, unless I'm uh, forgetting. Uh, I, I can't really think of a team. Actually, let's see. Let's quickly go back and have a look here. 2021. That was the year the Titans went to the finals. We'll take that, but we were in a losing year. Uh, no, like there wasn't there, there wasn't a team that I guess you could argue rabbits, but no, because in 2020 the Rabbitohs were there, so no, like nobody in 2021. So it's just been the last three years where there's just been someone that came out of nowhere, right? Literally came out of nowhere. And to prove this, right, for people who are maybe newer to rugby league, especially with the bandwagon being so heavy last year for the Warriors, in 2022 the Warriors did and no that's not correct that's not correct because we did not come last in 2022 the Gold Coast Titans I'm going to really clarify that one for everybody uh, but the Warriors came second last the Warriors came second last uh, but they were equal for uh, on points 14 and 14 with the Knights and also the Titans there but look at their points differential wow wait minus 292 that is that's actually awful for the bottom four in general to have four teams on minus 200 gee whiz uh, but anyway, that's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. Now, the point matter is, though, is that in 2023, obviously, they went from second last to third and got into the preliminary final and then obviously lost to the Brisbane Broncos, who went on and, uh, oh, gee whiz, yeah, got, got third. Um, so, went, no, sorry, got fourth. See, I don't know why it always, like, switches around the rounds there to 25 or whatnot, but anyway, there you go. So, they came uh, fourth position last year and then this year, as you can see, and let me just make sure, yeah, round 27, it was all the way down in 13th. So let's knuckle down and see kind of what's what's gone wrong here uh, because that is a big drop-off. Now, they did score 512 points this year, which is pretty average, you know, especially for a bottom eight team. It's actually a bottom nine team, sorry. It is one of the better attacks of the bottom nine. Oh, it's the top four of the bottom nine, so not that great. But like, like I said, on average, right? So you got the Tigers who scored 463, 488 for the Titans. Uh, the Rabbitohs 494, and don't worry, Titans have a lot to do with your season. And that's not me being biased. You know what I'm about to be referring to. Uh, Broncos scored 537, Dragons 508, uh, Dolphins 577, and the Rays 474. So you, you outdid everyone except for the Broncos, the Dolphins, and the Eels. And the Eels did finish lower than you. So the attack is okay, right? The attack is okay. Obviously, Shawnee Johnson, this was his last year. Last year, he had a fantastic year. This year, we kind of knew that age was going to start getting to him. And did also become the scapegoat, but wasn't great as well. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that Shawnee Johnson had a great year at all. Uh, but with that being said, he did easily become that scapegoat that regardless if it was him or, him or not, the Warriors fan base was going to come for him. Because it is so large. You know, you do have a whole country and an entire country that represents you and that backs you in. And I get it. I love it, right? But the point of the matter is, is that it did get really, really hot 
for a club legend in Sean Johnson. I do feel for him, man. I do. Because it's not like he's going out there to play badly. It just, unfortunately, that age does come. You know, my boy, Kieran Foran, is, is you know, it, well, he's not getting haunted by our fan base, but, you know, 2025, but, like, let's see what happens. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to have to defend him every single week because I love that man. But the point matter is that age will always come. And that's what I'm with Shawnee J. Uh, but, yeah, look, I think that... Um, I think that this is this is okay, but it does clearly show why you, you weren't in the top eight. With that being said, the Knights got in with 470, which is one of the worst attacks in the actual comp. Literally, the second worst attack in the entire competition. And they got into the eight. So it does give you a little bit of a polarizing difference there because guess what? It comes down to the defense. And on the defense, you gave up 574 points, which again is not actually completely awful. Right, it does give you a clear reading as to why you're not in the top eight when the top eight are getting 510 against, 521, 433, 431, 463, 394 for the Panthers, which is incredible. You know, uh, that is just unbelievable in regards to the defensive system, the only team on in the 300s. And then the Warriors down here on 574. But again, it's well better than <laughs> the Tigers on 750, the Eels 716, 682 here, 656 here. 634, everyone else, you actually had the best defense in the bottom nine. You had the best defense in the bottom nine, only by four points on the Dolphins, but you had the best defense in the bottom nine. You had a minus 62, which is, you know, 100 better than the, the Titans, 100 odd better than the Eels, uh, 110, 20 odd better than the Rabbitohs, and about a billion better than the Tigers. But again, we're going to get to this team in a second, which has kind of been the real crucial telltale of the Warriors season, unfortunately. You know, it has really shown where the Warriors were at in 2024. Because there are games that are going to happen, right? There are go there are games that are really going to, to get you and beat you in the last seconds and whatnot. But twice this year, this team got a resounding result. And for two different complete reasons. So, look, to, to wrap up the ladder here, to wrap up this ladder... For the Warriors, obviously it's disappointing to drop from fourth all the way down to 13th. At least you did avoid the the wooden spoon, and at least, which you've never had, mind you. And at least you did avoid the bottom four, which is a positive. But it does keep keep you just ooh, it does keep you just straight in mediocrity. It does just put you into a bit of a purgatory here, where you know the Warriors have never won a premiership. They've won a minor premiership back in 20, 2001, 2002, one of the two. They've also never won a wooden spoon. So, and no one really cares about the minor premiership. No one really thinks about the minor premiership. So, although you guys think of it like that, a lot of other teams well, don't even probably know that you've won that, right? So, you are in a real big purgatory as a team. And I'm not saying this to insult you, right? I'm not saying anything to insult any clubs. I'm just saying it how I see it. And there is a purgatory here where it's never good enough to win, but you're never bad enough to come bad, bad last. So, it's really interesting to see this Warriors team kind of just make their way all the time, right? Then don't worry, you know, I know all about that. <laughs> I don't, I know all about that, but be worse than what my team does. So yeah, look, I think really bland year because okay attack, one of the better defenses of the bottom eight, uh, bottom nine, won nine games, lost 14, but let's get into the draw. Let's get into the draw. I don't think many Warriors fans or any Warriors fans can actually disagree. Actually, and also, mind you, you obviously did have that draw, right? Which meant that this doesn't matter in the points differential. You still had minus 62. To just, just on a season review standard, that doesn't mean anything in regards to, you know, the actual, like, up and down through round 24, 25, 26, whatnot. But it does mean something in a season review standard about the points differential. Uh, the reason I say that is because obviously, you know, playing other teams, uh, you already had that draw, so this will never matter. But here, it does. So you had a better points differential than everybody in the bottom nine, and by a decent bit, except for the Dolphins. And it wasn't too significant over the Broncos, but the Dolphins are the only team in that top, uh, that bottom nine that had a better points differential than you. So that is something to take out of it. And you also weren't too far off the Knights. Again, any, and I've said this for weeks now, any team who came 8th, any team who came 8th, they're lucky to be there. They shouldn't really be there, but they're there because they have to be because there has to be 8 teams in the finals, right? They're, whether it was the Knights, the Raiders, the Dolphins, the Dragons, the Broncos, whoever, even the Titans, Warriors, whoever made it, didn't matter. This team, whether they get bounced out first week, which they should do, uh, they will get bounced out second week, and I'm surprised that, you know, anyone is able to be there, but they are there, right? So anyway, long story short, Warriors... 
bland is what I would put in regards to their ladder positioning. Okay, now let's go have a look. So obviously, at the end of the season, if you don't really look too heavily at this, um, especially considering the season was really well done by now. But I'm going to separate this into two parts. I'm going to separate... No, we'll go through it, okay? So the first game of the season, obviously, it was a 16-12 uh, win to the Sharks there. I do remember this game, and uh, it was actually quite important because the Warriors got to a bang in the start, and we're like, okay, the Warriors, they are here. They are here in 2024. They're not going to stop playing. They're not going to, uh, you know, let that be a one-off year last year. They started off right hot that first 20. In that last 60 minutes, the Sharks just dominated and obviously came back and won, and that was in New Zealand, which was a very worrying sign at the time because... You know, the Warriors were really, really good in that first 20. They put all the emphasis, effort, you know, power into that first 20. And then, unfortunately, let it go. And yes, the Sharks obviously ultimately did end up coming into the top four, which is great. They were a very beatable team throughout the season as well. So this one actually does set the standard, I guess, for the Warriors season. I'm going to have to bring it up here, Warriors. This is the most heartbreaking game I've seen for you guys in a very long time. Uh, I believe you deserved that, but this showed a lot about where the Storm were at, where they just, and throughout, if you look back in hindsight now, this makes sense because the Storm just know how to win games that they shouldn't, right? They shouldn't have won this game. You guys should have won this game. The Warriors absolutely deserve that. Xavier Coates obviously scoring a miraculous try in the last seconds from like 10, 7 meters out, jumping to, to score an insane try, but they scored two tries in the last seconds. So these two games are very similar. This one, you were kind of well beaten despite the score being close. This one you didn't deserve to lose. So those opening two rounds really did set the precedent and standard for what the Warriors were kind of looking to this season where they're just off the pace. They're just off the mark. And that's why you see their attack, average, defense, average. It's not awful. It's not great. Just off the mark. That's what I'd say about the Warriors. Now, you go into these next few rounds here. They beat the Raiders. They beat the Knights. And they beat the Rabbitohs there before they go on to a draw. This is a very good period here for the... Uh, this is a very good period here for the Warriors because it got them back on track. Beating the Rays 18-10, it's a bit of a whoop to do, but with that being said, they needed that win. Then also, and these are both in New Zealand. Actually, they had a three-game stretch here in New Zealand. And they, they actually, because this is actually about to be inclusive with the, the Titans game. So they've actually got a four-game stretch at home in one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. Uh, yeah, in six weeks. They actually played... They actually played five games in their first eight weeks at home. So you could... Oh, yeah. They played five games in their opening eight weeks at home and they struggled. That's... Yeah, that's harsh to see. Um, this one is expected. This one you would have expected at the time and also this one you would have expected at the time. Looking back in hindsight, Rabbitohs one doesn't matter. The Knights one... I don't really think it matters and the Raiders one doesn't really matter a great deal too because these teams did struggle for a majority of the year and they were if they weren't you know fighting for the spoon with the Rabbitohs the Knights and the Raiders were very up and down in regards to fighting for the top eight and both of them you know finished an eighth and ninth right so bang on the middle of the average so and this team didn't um, go hard until late on in the year this one was when at least they had Jamal Fogarty there with the Raiders so a decent stretch here this one was a, was a hurtful one. A um, couple controversial calls for both teams, realistically. But then we're going to get down here. We're going to get after the draw, and this is where Warriors fans are going to start to freak out a little bit, right? Because it's okay to lose the Dragons in the year that they had. But I'm about to kind of insult my team whilst also throwing a little bit of shade here at the Warriors and saying, well, not throwing shade, but telling you this is unacceptable. This game here... So you lost 27-24 to the Gold Coast Titans, which again, put my hand up, is my team. I was in New Zealand for this. I enjoyed this. I was at every game of the Gold Coast Titans this year. Home away. The Titans hadn't won a game until this point. The Titans were 0-6 with a bye. They were 0-6 with a bye. This is Anzac Day. The Warriors fought so hard. They fought so hard to be able to get this game, to be able to get the Anzac Day clash in Auckland because the Storm always had it down there in Melbourne. The Storm didn't want to give it up, so the Storm kept it. They played the Rabbitohs whilst the Warriors at home played against the Titans. Now, the Titans have actually, fun fact for you, played the Warriors in New Zealand twice now on Anzac Day and won both times. And that was the year before the Warriors started playing Melbourne on the uh, on the annual clash. 
So the Titans won this one 27-24, and the Warriors actually pumped the line for the last 20 minutes, but just couldn't get over it. They were just off the mark. This is the issue with the Warriors this year, just off the mark. And you look at the way that they came into this, it did seem like it was just a given. It was just going to happen. But this will relate to the follow-up game. It will. Because they did not come into this game prepared. And unfortunately, I don't find it acceptable to lose in front of your amazing, beautiful home crowd there in Auckland on such an important and respectful day against a team that had not won a game the season so far. I'll take it, and I'll put my hand up and say I love it. But for you guys, I feel for you. I do. I think this right here is what really started to push home that this season wasn't going to be a great one for the Warriors. Because you did win this little stretch here, besides the Dragons game and the draw. You did have this struggle start, but this hammered home the struggles that are still there and are going to come, right? So then you go on to lose to the Knights, the Roosters. You beat the Panthers at Magic Round, where both teams had players out, but you had a great amount of players out, which showed your depth. It showed that you do have the quality coming through. It does show that you do have young players that are really biting at the bit and, and chomping at the bit to, to get their crack and opportunity. And they won that game. And I'm, I'm super happy there for the Warriors because that was a, a miraculous game there at Suncorp Stadium. Right? So you think, okay, let's let's get on a roll here. They get on a roll. They beat the Dolphins. Bang! Here they are. They are back. And that was Indigenous round two. You know, they go and beat the Cowboys here. They go and give it a crack against the Storm. They go and give it a crack against the Storm, which you're happy with. Right, so this period of the season, that middle part of the year after that Panthers game, ignore those Knights and Roosters, after that Panthers game, you did go on a bit of a run and, and you're happy with it. Then you lose 66-6 to the Titans. Then you lose 66-6 to the Titans. And to provide a little bit of context for this one as well, in this game, the Titans came into this in their worst part of the year. Not the other six part. They just lost to the last place Rabbitohs by about 40. And they just lost to the last place Tigers when they dominated the game. We were feeling awful. That's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It is. It's unacceptable to lose to the Titans, who are a bottom 14. Have been exactly fourth last every single year for the last three years. The highest score the Titans had ever gotten until that point was 44. That was the highest amount of points they'd ever scored. They went and got an extra 22 points on that in this game. I'll move past it, but that that really, that was really bad. And I would, that was really bad. I've been a part of many losses like that, but not to a team of the caliber that we saw from the Titans this year. So we move now down. They obviously bounce back from that with a win over the Broncos. They do get robbed here. Uh, they do get robbed in that game against the Dogs there. Uh, but again, I think from this point of the season, the Warriors knew their season was done. Their season was over because you can't, you can't, you just can't. Um, but they have a win there against the Bronx, who were dreadful this year. They get robbed against the Dogs. Uh, the bye, they lose the Raiders. They beat the Tigers, whatever. Again, they lose another unacceptable match here to the Eels at home. Uh, when the Eels were fighting to avoid the spoon, which they got. And they, this is actually the reason why they avoided the spoon, I, I believe. And I spoke about that in the Parramatta Eels um, breakdown. Lose to the Dolphins. It makes sense considering they were fighting for the eight. Manly, Bulldogs, and the Sharks with a bye. Now, this is always a little bit about how you go on one here in the regards to the bye in round 27. So we've had two teams in the Eels and the Warriors get the bye in the last round of the season. And it can be a benefit if you've set yourself up already by that time. But if you haven't set yourself up already by that time, then it actually just hurts you completely. Now, luckily for the Warriors, well, not luckily, but um, this season didn't matter. Just like the last season, it didn't matter with the Eels either. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't. So this isn't as beneficial as you think. It's only beneficial if you're like seventh or eighth and you need a win, your points differential sorted, and you get that win based off of the bye, which gets you into the finals, right? That's the only time it's beneficial, but you need to do what you need to do to get to that stage, right? So to summarize this season... I hate to keep bringing you back to it. Losing at home to a team that was 0-6, and then in an important part of the year after you just had a really good run of wins and, and, and real close matches, losing 60-66. And if you want me to, 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 to say it's not the Titans and whatnot, and you want to kind of bring it back to something else, you know, this also summarizes it. You know, so... Like, I, I think the Warriors 
again, like they just got wins in parts and losses in parts and draw. And it was when they lost, they lost pretty well. When they won, they could also win pretty well. But a lot of games, a lot of games were close. Like this, this team was very up and down this year. But I would just say it was bland. I, I would say this season was bland. I would use that word. Now let's go into the signings tracker, right? Let's go through their contracts. So you look here and you say, so this early part, all these guys at the beginning. So there's actually a, a real big mix here, yeah? So you've got um, Adam Fanor Blake, who we're obviously going to talk about going to the Sharks. Adam Pompey, uh, Leah Tower, Bunty R4, uh, who I believe is off actually, even though it says 2025 here. I think he's been told that he can leave. Uh, Harris Tavita with a mutual option in 2026. Uh, Sifakula with a club option in 2026. Uh, a lot of guys here, like Chance and Dallin and whatnot, 2025. So like, soon they can actually start talking to other teams, but I don't think they'll leave, right? Just depends on what the club wants. They are about to go through an adjustment period. No Sean Johnson, a lot of these contracts, 2025. However, you know, my boy, Ezra Clark. Get around, Ezra Clark, man. Beautiful man, lovely man. Can't wait to see him do what he does for the Warriors, man. I'm really excited to see it. Uh, to be back home there. Uh, but obviously, that's a new signing. All these long-term contracts are kind of the new signings here. Or youngsters like Jacob Laban, uh, Freya Lussig, uh, Jackson Ford to 2025. Most of your contract 2025, except for this little period here where you got Jad Savanga who's off, Kurt Capewell to 2026, Metcalf near Corre uh, 2026, Masan Montoya next year, uh, Mitchell Barnett 2027. Uh, they upgraded Pasa uh, Rocker Berry 2026, Roger Tuvas Shek 2026, obviously Sean Johnson is off. Uh, and then a couple of the guys here, 2025, Wade Egan uh, 2027 and, and so on, right? So overall, the little snapshot that I would take from this is that it's kind of a mix between next year and the year after that is really, really big. There's not like a one, and it's not like the Eels where we saw a lot of club options and player options and mutual options and what, what not, right? Some really important player options like Mitchell Moses and Dylan Brown, which by the way could relate to you guys too in the Warriors. There's not much in regards to like club options, mutual options, and player options. But they have made like this big signing here, obviously, in Fish. But overall, a lot of these guys here with the 2025s, except for Watinsa Lesniak and also Chance. And let's see if any other 25s. Uh, I'm going to walk right include in that as well. Jackson Ford, I would include maybe in that. Uh, Marcelo Montoya, a big stay part of their team. Tomati Martin is one of them. Tohu Harris is one of them. These are big decisions to make by next year. Besides that, you've still got a couple of years, right? So you take that. But development list, Ben Far next year, or this year, sorry. Uh, Etuate Fukufoka this year. Train travel Jet Cleary. This is an exciting one. This is an exciting one here with Jet Cleary. Uh, obviously, the brother of Nathan Cleary uh, goes over there, gets his training trial in next year, and then also is signed for 2026 and 2027. So this is really exciting stuff. You, know, you don't know if he's going to be the next Nathan Cleary, but I'd rather have the opportunity of him being the next Nathan Cleary. You know, I'd rather have the opportunity. You've got to worry, though, that obviously he gets developed by you guys and then he goes to the Panthers to be with his brother. You do worry about that. But with that being said, you know, you can't think about that in the future. You just got to do everything you can to, to keep him at your club and to maintain his happiness in New Zealand, right? I love New Zealand. <laughs> I had a great time over there. Patrick Moimoy, uh, 2024. Uh, Selim Moyela Halasima, love him. He's there till 2026. Tanis Dower-Smith next year and Kalani going next year. Heard his name, uh, but don't really know too great about him. Halasima though, I'm excited to say. I'm really excited to see. So I, I, I like, I really think that's one of the better development lists that we've seen so far. Um, the development list is nice there. Yeah, the development list is nice. Uh, and then we go into the gains and losses. So from 2024, uh, they haven't actually updated the 2025 losses yet. But the 2024 gains, they brought in Roger Dewey versus Sheck back from Rugby Union. Obviously was at the Warriors beforehand, won Dally M fullback, uh, won Dally M in general. You know, incredible player. You did kind of know though that it wasn't, he wasn't the same player from before. People didn't really believe what I was saying there. But if you watch Rugby Union, you knew that. Chanel harris TV, Chanel harris TV, sorry, and Kurt Capewell from the Broncos. Um, this one is interesting because the 2024 games on paper, on name, brilliant. Right, Kurt Capewell, origin player. You know, was in a grand final last year. Uh, been doing well for the Broncos. Chanel harris TV, he's got a solid name to him. And Roger Tui versus Sheck, obviously, renowned All Black, Rugby League, Kiwis. Warriors, Roosters, Dalian, you name it. But this was going down an older track 
to try and chase the feeling from before. This was an unknown, realistically, because I think that he actually took a break based off of his Mormon mission, was it? It was a mission, which is all power to him, man. I believe in God, but I like that for him. But I just think that's a big risk from the Warriors in regards to this. And then we also saw him get a lot of people talking about him in regards to his kicking game this year, which I did feel for him. Uh, and then you got Kirk Catewell, who even at the time was okay. Like, he's nothing spectacular. He's no X Factor. He'll do what he does. And he's a tough player. Don't get me wrong. But I just feel like the Warriors, this is, wasn't their kind of signing, in my personal opinion. I, I didn't personally believe this was their kind of signing. And I didn't personally believe they had to go, kind of all that, to go and grab Kirk Catewell from the Broncos. So I do have my disagreements with this. I do think this didn't necessarily suit what the Warriors were building in 2023, personally. But in regards to losses, Viliami Vailea from the Cowboys, uh, Bailey Sirenen to the Catalans Dragons, uh, Brayton Williame to the Retired, Josh Cohen to the Bulldogs, important one. Uh, Ronald Volkman to the Dragons, that was an interesting situation. And Valinga Gepu, who was released. The only one here that I disagree with was Josh Curran to the Bulldogs. And I said this at the time, say this in hindsight, Josh Curran's been one of the best signings of the season. And for the Dogs, and look what the Dogs are doing. Um, I think that he was a real tough player that deserved a better opportunity there. Uh, but everybody else I'm okay with. Everybody else I think is fine. Uh, and this was just a absolute mess of a situation with the Dragons. I think the Warriors actually did the right thing and started paying and paid him uh, to, to get himself fixed and whatnot. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. But I, I believe the Warriors were the ones who came to the party on that. So good on the Warriors, by the way. Uh, but this was just, I didn't understand at the time. I think that Josh Curran's a great player and he's shown that in 2024. Uh, but then, so yeah, look, in regards to losses, I'm actually okay with most of those. I, I, I have my disagreements with this. I'm okay with most of those. Just don't agree with that one. So we go to the 25, 25 games for next year, right? You get my boy, Aaron Clark. Love that for you. He was incredible for us this year. He really was off the bench. Incredible. I don't think he's a starting front row forward, starting prop, but I do think you bring him off the bench. Just run it hard. Does good. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how he goes. Love him. Uh, you got James Fisher-Harris uh, from the Panthers. Obviously, you do lose Adam Fanor Blake. So when you talk about Fisher-Harris, you also have to talk about Adam Fanor Blake because it's not like you're just getting James Fisher-Harris, right? You can't say, oh, we're getting a three-time premiership winner. That's great. Yes, you are. But you're also losing a guy that a lot of people would actually argue is a better front row forward on X Factor in regards to attack. I would say defensively, Fisher-Harris, and I'd say attacking-wise, Adam Fanor Blake. So you do lose on the attack, but you do gain on the defense. Not that his defense is bad and not that his attack is bad, but I'm just saying... That's what you'd look at the two of them for. Um, this is a lot more toughness. This is a lot more size and kind of, yeah, X-Factor aggression kind of deal, right? So uh, I will be honest with you here. And I will say that if I was asked who I would prefer, it would be Adam Fanor Blake. But I think that Fisher Harris works harder for the team. So... If your direction is hard-working players for the team that want to be there and want to succeed with your club, this is the right signing and this is the right loss. If you're looking on a pure player basis, who is the better player? Accolades-wise, Fisher-Harris gets it. Eye test-wise and probably stats-wise, Adam Fanor Blake gets it. So there is two different, there's multiple different ways that you can actually look at this trade. It's effectively a trade, right? There's multiple ways you can look at it. You can argue that Fisher Harris is clearly the better. You can clearly argue that Adam Fanor Blake's the better. It just comes down to the viewpoint that you have based on what I just said. Jet Cleary, we've already spoken about. Motu Sikala, I have heard about this. He's upgraded. I don't know a great deal about him, however, right? So uh, I can't really talk too heavily on that. And then obviously, S. Clark from the Titans. I love all of this. I love all of this for 2025. The only issue for me with the Warriors, who's your halfback? Right, the only issue for me with the Warriors is who is your halfback and can they replicate what Sean Johnson did in 2023? I don't know. You know, I don't know about the Warriors in regards to their spine, besides obviously Wade Egan, besides Chance. You know, they've got, how'd they finish up their season again? What did they What did they have in their second last game when they had Sean J as their seven? Um, and that was a miraculous game, this. That was a good way to finish off the season at the very least. So they got Tainto Picky. You could argue that Tainto Picky is going to be their fullback, to be fair. You, you could argue it. Gold Coast Titans product. Thank you. Don't worry. You can thank us later now. You can thank us later. Now and later. All the time. 
Uh, Chance, center, Luke Metcalf. That's right, Luke, I like Luke Metcalf, I do. I think Luke Metcalf is a great player. But a lot of this team will change. But with that being said, Luke Metcalf, but who goes to the seven? Are you going to put Chanel? Is Chanel harris Savita going to be your seven? I don't know if that gets the job done. You know, is Chanel harris Savita going to uh, do... Is Chanel harris Savita going to be the guy that replaces Sean Johnson? I don't know. Uh, you know, you had Ronald Volkman that you didn't... Miss. It didn't work out. You know, Jack Cleary is still too early. I believe he's up. But Tamati Martin is there. But I wouldn't be necessarily doing that. Uh, yeah. It, it's going to have to more than likely... Comment in the chat, please. Comment in the comment section, please. I think right now this is the only one that I can see unless you make a signing for the seven. Because he's too young still, Jack Cleary. He's still too fresh. There is to Muddy Martin. There is... There is things you can do. But it's just... That's the most important position on the field at the moment. The... the, the the halfback is the most important position in the competition at the moment. Absolutely, it's not the fullback; it's the flashy halfback. But there we go, guys. That's my review here. I would say that, in context to last year, definitely is a failure of a year. Obviously, you didn't want to finish here. I think that there is still some very positive signs going forward. Obviously, Andrew Webster had a really down year this year maybe was given too much high expectations based off one year because realistically you know they were poor and then were really good last year and they've gone back to being poor this year and i find that a lot of these you know big time one season coaches do go through those poor years and people start to question them again which is what they've been questioning webster this year they'll definitely do it next year if they fail todd payton had it with the cowboys and seraldo was getting hounded last year loved this year they don't succeed next year the Bulldogs he'll be the same right I think the biggest thing for me in regards to the Warriors next year is figuring out their seven figuring out their halves pairing I, I think Luke Metcalf has to be the six so if he's the seven or maybe they put the seven somebody else has a six but I think Luke Metcalf is a pure six the biggest thing for them is sorting out their halves pairing and I think the biggest thing for them is this might be a little bit harsh, to be fair, because he has been an incredible player. I do think they need to start moving past the old guard, which is Roger Tui versus Sheck. You know, I do think they need to stop chasing the feeling from before. I think the Warriors need to go into their new direction. They need to go straight past the Sean Johnson era, and they need to develop. They're not going to win the comp next year. It's not going to happen. Unless Fisher-Harris does a miraculous thing and completely adjusts his attitude and just gets his Warriors team going like the Panthers. But I'm just saying, I don't think that this roster right now can win the Premiership. But I think that you have to develop Cleary. You have to develop guys like, was it Halasima? Is it, it was his name? Uh, or Pasikala too. Uh, yeah, uh, Salomela Halasima. You know, Pasikala. Develop. Because you do have good development. Because we saw that in the game against the Panthers. We saw that in that Magic Round game against the Panthers. You do have the talent coming through. You do. You do have the talent coming through. So develop for a couple of years, be patient. I know you hate to hear that. I hate hearing that with my team, but you have to be patient. You have to be, uh, because it's not gonna happen next year, but it will happen if you develop it correctly. And Andrew Webster is the guy, right? But Andrew Webster is under a bit of pressure too. You know, if they finish bottom four or even where they are this year, next year, then there will be massive question marks starting to be asked about Webster that it was a one season wonder. So the things that they need to do is figure out their house pairing, move past the old guard, really start their development through the next couple of years, and Webster needs to get it going. I don't think he's on like a sack-worthy note. Like, I think you'd have to come last or second last that to happen, but I just think that severe questions will be asked, especially when it's a whole country that is behind you that has the ability to just smash you on socials, just really put the pressure on and go hard at you. So... I am excited about what the Warriors' potential is in the future. I don't think it's now, but I think it's in the future. And I think that if they develop correctly, we could see them in a few years' time win a premiership. It just comes down to that patience, man. And I know that's a, a harsh word to hear. But that's it. We're done here for today. I appreciate you guys as usual. Obviously, like I said, it's my perspective, man. That's my perspective. 
So if you want to jump into the comment section, if you agree or you disagree, you slightly agree, you slightly disagree, comment below. Let me know, man. I want to hear your thoughts. You know, I, I am a fan of another team. You know, you might be a fan of the Warriors, or you might be a fan of another team too. I want to hear all your perspectives and opinions, right? Because we're all entitled to them. So um, I appreciate you. Obviously, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new around here. We are halfway through the bottom nine now. So we've only got four more teams to go to the bottom nine. Then obviously, once teams start to filter out of the finals, you'll start to see those teams in the top eight and whatnot. But yeah, excited to uh, excited for this season to, to come to a climax and see who ultimately takes out the chocolates. All right, guys, I appreciate you. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.